there's any place in the scriptures that we may see Jesus being angry. Uh, today, of course, is the day as we hear of him clearing out the temple. But even then, if, if it was anger, we know that it was justifiable anger because of what was happening in his father's house, in the temple area, the, the holy of holies, uh, that they're treating it, as he says, they're treating it like a market place. They're treating it uh, like a worldly thing and not truly a place that is holy and it's called to be set apart. And so Jesus goes in. And remember, this is, this is the beginning here as we hear actually of John's gospel. It's the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. This is John chapter 2. I mean, this is way in the beginning. And yet when he goes in there, uh, he drives them out and once again uh, wants to make sure if there's anything in there that's not of God uh, to get it out there. It would be quite the scene, I'm sure, to see him uh, making uh, a whip of cords and, and driving people out. Of course, as he does this, the Pharisees kind of question, like, who are you? Who are you uh, to, to do this? What, shot, what sign can you show us for doing this? And Jesus, of course, says this uh, famous passage, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up. And we know, because we know the whole story of what he was talking about there, that his, his body is uh, the temple. And if you destroy, it'll be raised up in three days, which of course we know happens in the resurrection, which we celebrate uh, during that, that Easter season, which we are preparing for uh, during the season of Lent. You know, just like Jesus, we too are called uh, to a certain sense to see our body as a temple. You know, whenever I say that, people think, oh, if that's the case, then our body should be like, you know, should be, should be like bodybuilders, should be like Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the, the 70s and 80s, where we should be like that, that CrossFit athlete that has a 0.000001% body fat. And if that was the case, I definitely would not be preaching about that, because I would be a horrible example if that's how we were called to look, right? But instead... Of course, we know that our body is supposed to be treated with dignity and, and respect and to take care of it. But instead of this, that, we also know that we're called to treat our soul as this temple as well. And to drive out of it anything that is not of the Lord, anything that is unclean. And to get rid of those, those worldly uh, allurements. And what we call those worldly allurements a lot of times are other things we give into is sin. And what we're called to do is to, to cast them out, to drive them out, just like Jesus did in the temple with the, the money changers and everything else, that anything in our body that's not of the Lord, any sin, we want to drive out and, and be angry about it as well. Like, get out of here. I don't want this sin anymore. And to say to Satan, Satan, get behind me. And don't only get behind me, Get out of here. Go to the abyss. Go down to the netherworld. Stay down there. I want nothing to do with you. And that's how we must treat sin. To not let it fester inside of us. Not to let it take hold of us. And if we do fall in sin, especially any sort of serious sin, uh, and if it's a mortal sin, to get to confession as soon as possible. Not to let us rot, let it rot from inside of us and separate us from God. But of course, we know we're not called to go to confession just when we have moral sin, but we're called to go to confession often. And I want to use an analogy. Actually, I read about it uh, from Matthew Kelly. I think we, we've all maybe heard of Matthew Kelly. If not, he wrote the book uh, to Rediscover Catholicism. He has other books out there as well from Dynamic Catholic. It's a great organization. And one of those books, he used an analogy of confession of kind of like getting your car washed, which I think is a good analogy, especially in this, this warmer weather now as we all probably want to get our car washed for the first time since, you know, uh, October, November, or, or December. 
But what happens when we go and get our car washed? Of course, as we're, we're waiting in that 40-minute line, however long it takes, that quick trip or wherever else we get our car washed, what do we do? We start going through our car and start, oh, this is trash here, this is trash here, this is trash here. We go through the car wash and we continue to clean out our car. We even, we even vacuum up uh, the car and we, we find some, some strange things, right? We find bulletins from back from November of last year. Uh, we find coffee cups that... Uh, well, it's not coffee in there anymore, that's for sure, right? And if you have kids, you find goldfish everywhere, right? Thinking, how did the goldfish get in this power outlet? That just doesn't make sense, right? But we see this, and so what we need to do, of course, is, is clean it out. And as soon as we do that, we have, a, we have a clean car on the outside and on the inside. As we drive away, what do we do? Well, maybe we see a puddle. We're like, oh, 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 that puddle's not getting my car today. So we swerve around, right? As we get home that night, we make sure to take the, the coffee cup inside with us. As we go home from church after getting a car wash as well, we say we're taking the bulletin and we're going to maybe read it inside the house uh, as, as well, right? This is, this is what we do. We take stuff out so we can keep it clean. But as the days go on, we start to lose some of that resolve. We don't avoid the puddle. We don't take the coffee cup with us. We leave the bulletin uh, in, in the car, and we don't pick up the, the snacks that were left behind uh, from our kids as well. And so next thing you know, two, three weeks later, or four or five weeks, or two or three months later, our car is filthy again. And what do we have to do? Go and wash it and clean it out. What happens when we go to confession? What happens when we go to confession is, hopefully before we can come inside the church, we've done this examination of conscience. We've gone to the Lord and say, okay, Lord, what sins do I have on my soul right now? And we, so we examine. And we, we realize, okay, there might be some that are, that are quite obvious. You know, I, I continue to fall in the sin uh, of gossip. I continue to uh, uh, commit the sin of gluttony. I continue to, uh, you know, uh, be judgmental. But there might be some other sins in there that maybe we don't even realize, and they're, they're hiding somewhere deep inside of our soul. You know, and when that happens, when we can go that deep way, we, we look and say, oh, I want to bring that to the Lord so it's not festering inside of me. And so we, we go to confession. When we go to confession, we walk through those doors immediately, know we're going to ha- receive uh, this grace, this forgiveness, this mercy that God wants to give us. And as we leave confession, we have such a better opportunity to fight against that sin. And just like driving away from a car, we're going to avoid, you know, the puddles, we're going to avoid that sin as well. So when that temptation comes, uh, to gossip, to, to be judgmental, whatever it may be, we're able to avoid it. But even then, when, when we leave confession, it was, it was Father William Bear who said, when you leave confession, you should immediately go and pray because your soul has never been clear, cleaner. You've never had this greater relationship with God when all of our sin is wiped away. And so it's almost like a one-on-one relationship uh, with God. So take advantage of that time as well. And then to have have that resolve is, okay, I don't want to fall again. So I know when I I go to this party, I may be tempted uh, to to drink too much. And so I'm going to limit that. I'm only going to have two drinks. I know that in this class, I I have a temptation to, to cheat or to copy homework, whatever it may be. So, Lord, I'm going to stop that. I know I have this temptation as well that, you know, when I'm dejected or whatever else it may be, I'm going to go on, on this website. I'm going to look at this app. I'm going to go to the social media that just does not lead to good things. And we bring that to the Lord because now we have that grace that he's saying, I'm with you. Turn to me. Let's not go to that sin. And he gives us something called mercy which means that he not only forgives us, but that he helps us as well, helps us to avoid that sin. So it's not just us driving, avoiding puddles, right? 
It's God who's saying, I will give you everything you need. All you have to do is follow me and receive the mercy that I want to give you. And when you do this, we too can at least try, with God's help, to keep our soul clean. It doesn't mean that we're not going to sin again. We are. Eventually, it's going to get filthy again. But every time we go to confession, we're actually making progress because God is just chipping away maybe at that habitual sin. Whatever else is deep inside of us, what we have to do is let him clean us out and continue to make those those resolutions with God's help that we can avoid uh, these near occasions of sin. You know, I recommend everyone, everyone to go to confession at least once every three months. Why? You might think, Father, that's a lot. Well, I don't know about you, but I can sin a lot in three months. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. So I actually try to go much more often than once every, every three months. But even if you just go once every three months, there's kind of that, that way when we go, like, okay, I struggled with this last time, but I've made this progress. Or in the last three months, I've really fallen into this type of sin. And so now I'm aware of it so I can avoid it in the future. So I highly recommend that, that you go to confession. You take advantage of that sacrament, especially uh, during the season of Lent, but all the time as well. You know, something interesting has happened here at St. John since the pandemic, which we're coming on about a year anniversary now. We've actually heard more confessions since the pandemic than we were before, which is absolutely astounding to me. You'd think it'd be the opposite. think people would be afraid to come. But I think with the coronavirus, we've kind of realized the frailty of our life and the need for God. We also know that society is much more messed up in the past year as well. So what we want to do is go to the Lord and ask him uh, for help. So that's been a beautiful thing to see here at uh, St. John's. And I encourage you to continue uh, to go to confession. You can find the confession times uh, in the bulletin. I do want to highlight uh, that actually during Lent we, we've added more confession times. Uh, the first one that we've added is a Wednesday evenings from, from 5 to 6 uh, p.m. And I'll tell you, if, if you do not want to wait long in line for confession, come on a Wednesday evening. Let me tell you why. In the last three weeks, for two confessions during that time. So it's wide open. So if you want to come this Wednesday, maybe you can help me stay awake in the confessional uh, as well. Uh, I'm always awake, so don't worry <laughs> about that. right? But also this week on Saturday, we have a special occasion to, to go to confession. So I'll be hearing confessions from about 8.40 in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon. So I'll be in there that, that whole time. Uh, I might take a break to go, you know, uh, get a cup of coffee or eat something real quick, but I'll be in the confessional uh, to, to hear confession. So I strongly encourage you to come this upcoming Saturday, either during that time, or as well you can come that evening during Exaltamus. Uh, we'll have confessions going on. Uh, I'll be hearing confessions. Father Peter Hughes will be hearing confessions, as will Archbishop Hebda. Uh, so if you ever want to go to confession to a bishop, uh, this upcoming Saturday night is your opportunity uh, to, to do so. And if uh, you know Archbishop Hebda, he's a very generous man, a very charitable man, and I'm sure that he is a great confessor uh, as well. So once again, I just encourage you to, to take advantage of that sacrament. Maybe you're thinking, you know, Father, uh, it's, it's just not for me. I, I, don't, I don't need confession. I just go one-on-one -on -one, uh, with the Lord, and that's, that's good enough. Really? All right. We can look at scriptures and see uh, that, that Jesus over and over again, at least a couple different times, you know, gives the apostles the, uh, the authority uh, to forgive sins. Whatever is loosed is loosed. Whatever is bound is bound. Other part, maybe we're a little hesitant because, you know, you may say, like, Father, it's been 20 years, 30 years, 40 years since my last confession. Or I know that there's a sin that I just can't overcome. Come. Come to confession. Receive that grace, receive that mercy that God wants to give you. And you will experience that, that peace that you are longing for. And not only that, you will receive the grace and the mercy that God wants to give you as well. So we can drive out those things in our soul that do not belong to God.